Indiana University is home to the world's only accredited violin crafting school. I became the professor of violin making in 1987. The shop was started by Janos Starker, cellist, Joseph Gingold, violinist. It was their, uh, their brainstorms back in 1973. It began as a repair and maintenance program and in that first semester changed into a violin making program. The administration, they uh, didn't really know that it existed because uh, usually when a program does real well and it doesn't need money, uh, it tends to, and the administration changed hands four or five times. So yeah, it kind of got misplaced there for a while. Because the school is so small, Everyone finds the program differently. I heard about the program from the internet. I, I don't know, I researching what was offered here and I saw string instrument technology. That sounds cool, but then I saw it was only an associate's degree. I was like, that kind of sucks. So I found a loophole and I'm gonna do it for a bachelor's degree. I actually heard uh, of the program through another maker in town, a repair person in town, and um, he brought me up here to introduce me to Tom, and after I stopped working with that individual, I decided that I would take this class, and I started my junior year of high school up here. The part that drew me into this program was building instruments. I don't know, I've always been fascinated with instruments, and uh, I fancy being a guitar builder, but this is a little more proper and uh, more beneficial in the education field and a lot better career choice, I think. Prior experience is not necessary before entering into the class. No, I don't play the violin. Uh, it's not a requirement before coming into this class, but you have to take lessons while you're in the class to get the degree, so Someday I will play the violin. I'm currently taking lessons for violin and cello. Um, I previously played violin for seven years when I was in high school and middle school. So what do the students do with their finished product? I plan on keeping it <laughs> because um, I kind of want to use it as a, as a guide for when I make my next one to be able to see the catenaries and things that Tom has coached me and when I won't have him to coach me. And plus, I really like the wood on my violin, so. Uh, the students keep their own work. They've paid for the materials in their own work. And they've spent two years making their first violin, so it's, it's theirs, which is unusual for a violin making program. Usually, uh, in violin making programs, you have to give up your first violin and your last violin uh, to the program along with paying for the program. My violin, which is currently this and that, uh, definitely gonna sell it. I mean, like I said, I don't play really at all. So, I mean, sell it and make money. <laughs> the normal rate is about $3,500. The most one ever sold for was $10,000. But uh, I've had a student sell one for $800 because he needed money. The program provides a wealth of experience for the future. I want to go to France, and that doesn't necessarily involve violin making because it's a very hard um, country to get started in, in particular, and especially as a female, it's extremely hard. So I would really like to be a maker or work in a shop, but if I'm going to move to France, it might make it difficult. But if I end up staying in the United States, I'll probably definitely get a job in some shop. Yeah, after college, I fully plan on uh, staying in the string instrument technology field, either working for a shop or independently, most likely through a repair shop or builder, either in violin or guitar, just depends on what comes my way. Hi.